Well, good morning, everyone. It's time for the Thursday webinar, and uh, today we're going to be looking at motor starting, part two. This is a continuation of our last webinar on motor starting, and I'm Chris Duffy. I'm the principal engineer here at Easy Power. Today, what we're going to be looking at are five uh, key applications in motor starting, and the first one will be motor start sequencing. The next uh, will be reduced voltage starting. We're going to be looking at two examples there. One's an auto transformer, the other one's a resistor start. Next, we'll be looking at soft starting, which is built into the motor itself, and I'll show you where that data is located and how we can activate soft starting. Then we'll be looking at entering load torque versus speed data, uh, which is something we may not have touched on before. I may have mentioned it, uh, but uh, we'd like to get that higher detail in on the actual torque versus speed data for the load, and uh, I'll show you where that's possible. And also, i uh, like to show you how to switch from starting to running load. We actually allow you to put in two different torque versus speed curves for your load, and uh, we let you switch from starting to running in case you have something happening, like uh, the motor is unloaded initially when it starts, and then you close the load in at some time after the motor start is complete. So those are the five key applications that we're going to be looking at today. And to be able to do them, we're going to be need, needing to plot specific quantities. And uh, last time I showed you uh, opening and closing breaker actions on a motor, how that would uh, create an auto plot with the, with the motor parameters automatically being plotted for you. Uh, but since we're going to be open and closing contactors and low voltage breakers someplace else in the system, we need to actually plot specific items, and I'll show you how, how to do that. So we're going to be making use of Easy Power's advanced plotting uh, selection methods, and this method is totally one-line interactive. We're going to uh, let you have five curves per plot in Easy Power, and allow up to nine plots. Uh, this is within both the uh, dynamic stability package and the transient motor starting. So we're going to give you access to the one line also for selecting what you want to plot in terms of the selection method. And the one line itself can be panned and moved around and zoom uh, in and out as you desire uh, when you're picking things that, that you'd like to plot. Bus voltage, motor current, those kind of things. And um, when you right-click on an item on the one line, a drop-down list will appear, a context list, for, uh, that would, it's going to help you make your plot selections right off of the one line. In addition, we're going to be making a, a use of scripts. And uh, so scripts, we haven't really touched on much uh, in, in the last one. I may have mentioned them, but basically, uh, we need scripts. We need to be able to tell the dynamic simulation what to do, when to close a breaker, uh, how long to run. And uh, so these are going to be used to define our simulation actions. They're really needed when double-click actions do not supply the level of detail that we really need in a simulation. And we want to tell the software package to do a particular timed action. Um, they are created in the script edit dialog, which is this button, and I'll show that to you. The script commands are run in a script engine that performs all the simulation actions. Those are defined in the Dynamic Stability Reference Manual. But the script engine is kind of working behind the scenes. And note that um, in reality, everything that's being run in stability or transient motor starting is a script. And so the double-click actions that I showed last time, and that we might actually perform a couple this time, they are actually converted into a script and then run. So scripts have these limits. Uh, first, they perform no autoplot action. So if you're running a script for a simulation, you're not going to get an autoplot. So that's why we need to define some plots for ourselves. They are limited to the commands documented in the DS reference manual. And the commands are time-dependent and chronological. They need to move from one time ahead to the next, to the next, to the next. You can't put a command in there that says, go back in time and, uh, and, and do something else. So we have to write them with that in mind. 
to run a script, it must be selected from the uh, script load drop-down list in the toolbar. I'll show you where that is in just a minute. They can only be run one at a time, so unfortunately this means, yes, we do not have a batch method for running, uh, for running a collection of scripts. Now that would be a really nice feature, uh, but that's not uh, present in EasyPower at this time. And they can only be created in the scripts edit dialog. In other words, you can't create a bunch of script commands in Excel or in Word and then copy and paste them in. You really need to create them in the scripts edit dialog. So for motor start sequencing, which is our first application we're going to be talking about, it's used to bring motors back online quickly and reliably. And it's typically implemented in a time sequence. And it's typically timed so that no two motors start together, which thus minimizes voltage drop. So now, I mean, you could if you wanted to start an entire group of motors if you knew in advance that they were not going to create a severe voltage drop. And you could actually do that with the sequence starting. You could start an entire group of motors. We won't be doing that today, but you actually could, and then prove out yes or no whether it's going to be a, a severe voltage drop. So that's one of the key things that, you know, I would think motor sequencing is for, determining whether you can, you can get through a sequence and whether you're going to be two motors will be stepping on top of each other and creating too severe a voltage drop. Um, we're going to be using the script editor to start these motors in a desired sequence. And when you're doing it, you, you either start with a known sequence time. In other words, you know exactly what's, uh, what's timed out in the field for the application. Or you start with like an even interval to then discern what's happening and then adjust your interval to get the proper timing. And that's really what we're going to be doing is selecting an equal interval, then we'll adjust it if it's not correct. And obviously we're going to be using the plotting to monitor our conditions. Okay, well, let me get out of here and go over to Easy Power and bring it up. And here's my sequencing case. And we have four motors, 900, two 500s, and a 350 horsepower. And I've put these in order. Uh, in how I'm going to be switching them on. So I'm going to start with the 900 with contactor M1, and then contactor M2, M3, and M4 successively. And I'm going to be using the script to do it. So you can see where the motors are located. They're on a 4160 volt bus. I'm feeding it um, by a 3MVA transformer, and I have a fairly stiff source up above. So if we go into the stability package, and let me reorient this a little bit. In the script edit feature, which is right with this button, so you click, click on script edit, we're going to see what I did. So here's my script. It's written M1234 sequence start. You can either click on edit or you can double click on it. And so we see here the script that I've written. First, I'm going to run to time one second. Now, if you with, were with me in the last webinar, you know that I like to run to steady state for one second. That's just kind of the thing that I like to do to make sure everything's stable first before I, I do a simulation. And uh, then I'm going to close this few switch, contactor M1. I'm going to run four times four seconds. And then I'm going to go to the next, the next, and the next, and continue with a four second interval in between them. Now, I could have written my own uh, you know, script if I wanted to. You could click on new, you could say my sequence. We could have come in here and done this. So I just want to show you at least once. Whoop. So the few switch. Whoop, I didn't do that right, did I? No, let's come back. Let's first run two time one seconds. Well you you got to see me make a mistake and correct it. So I think that's good. So close fuse switch, M1, I'm going to run four time, four seconds, and then I'm going to, again, close the fuse switch, M2, and I'm going to run four time, four seconds. And I could just keep going just like I did the other one, but hey, let's, let's stop right there. We're going to start two out of the four with my sequence. I'm going to hit close. Now, at this point, if you wanted to save your scripts, you just hit the Save button up here. Note, my 
recommendation, always, always, always be in a reset condition. So if the reset is grayed out, you're there. If you've run a simulation, I just ran steady state here that does nothing. It just runs steady state. You'll, you'll notice it's, it's lit up, okay? So that means you're in a condition at the end of a simulation where something could be open or closed or the, all the breakers on your system might be in some odd condition. Hit reset, then save when you're saving your scripts, okay? So let's pick our script here. It's called My Sequence. This was the select script drop-down list that I was talking about. We'll uh, select My Sequence and we will hit Run. Now, I have already defined some plots for this so I could take a look at them. So I plotted the bus voltage and the transformer current here. And we can see that I've got a problem when I start uh, contactor M1 or motor M1 with contactor M1 and then uh, motor M2, they're sitting on top of each other. Okay, so that quick script that I wrote, I started two motors in a sequence. Now, let's go ahead and run the full four motor sequence, okay, and take a look at it. And we can see very clearly that we didn't do a very good job. Well, obviously this was planned for this example, but in this case, you can see that motor M1 starting, it's got a fairly long start and we started M2 right on top of it and we got a much more severe voltage drop occurring all the way down to almost 85 percent. And so what we might want to do here is adjust our sequence so that we can get each motor starting independently. So what you could do is reset, script edit, double click. Let's say um, this run time should be let's say six seconds and let's set this one to three. Select the script and run. And voila, we see that yes indeed, if we just adjust our timing, we can start the first motor, second, third, and fourth, and they're not sitting on top of each other. Now, the way that I defined the plot curves here for plot one is in the defined plots. So let's just do this again for plot two. Okay, we again we have up to nine plots. Plot one's already got a couple things to find. If I go to plot two and I mark this row, I can right click, see the one line? I'm I'm holding down the scroll wheel to pan. That's what I'm doing, and the scroll wheel zooming in and out. And uh, I can right click on the bus and you can see all of the items that I can plot. So we plot uh, per unit voltage, and then we right-click on the transformer, and we say plot current in amps. Now, there's two sides to a transformer, so we need to tell it which side we want to plot. And I want to plot on the bus 2 side, which is the low voltage secondary. Then I hit the OK button. If I reset and I run my script again, plot 2 obviously will be identical to plot 1 but I could have put some other quantities in plot two. Obviously, that's the idea that you don't want to have two identical plots, but, uh, but you can see that that is how I created that for you, between plot one and plot two. Okay, so let's reset. And this is our motor sequencing, and uh, that's how you can do a quick one on the inside of EasyPower. And again, use scripting and define plots to create that for yourself. So let's go back to our slides. And let's pick up with our next topic, reduce voltage starting. Okay, so three types of reduced voltage starting, the first one being an auto transformer start, next one being a resistor start, and third one being a soft start. Now auto transformers uh, provide the greatest starting torque per ampere of line current than any other reduced voltage motor starting method. Now it's not always desirable because you have to open up the auto transformer contactor before you can close in the across the line run contactor. So this leaves the motor without power for a short time. And note, you cannot close the run contactor, you know, a make before break type situation. You can't close the run contactor before opening 
uh, the auto contactor's contactor. And the main reason is it'll create a high current short condition because on the secondary of the transformer, even though you're trying to bypass it, it's going to try to hold the voltage down at that 65%. So you're really not doing things correctly. I mean, you can't short an auto transformer out from primary to secondary. That's just not a, a good thing uh, to, to try and do now. You can actually simulate it and see what response would be on the inside of Easy Power. So I guess, yes, you could actually look at it if you wanted to. You could do that, make before break, and you'll see how high the current gets when you do that. So um, to accommodate this uh, within Easy Power, the way we're going to do it is we're going to add a two winding transformer and a bypass connection onto our one line. And uh, then we're going to set uh, the transformer KVA to that of the auto, the input and output KV to that of the auto transformer as well, and we're going to set a transformer impedance. Now, on the secondary output tab, we're going to want to set it to the percent reduction that we desire out of the auto. So, for instance, if we want a 65% reduced voltage start, we're going to set it to 35%. And then we're going to add switches or contactors for our bypass contactor, which we're going to call our run contactor, and also for an auto transformer contactor. So let's take a look at that on the inside of Easy Power. And I'm going to close the previous case. And let's bring in the reduced voltage start case. <clears throat> so here's our auto transformer. Oh, let me just zoom out a little bit and show you. Uh, 400 kVA transformer, 5%, 700 foot cable run, we're at 480 volts, we're going to be starting a big 350 horsepower motor. And we have an auto transformer and our bypass. Here's the run contactor, I, I named it specifically run, and this contactor I named start reduced voltage start for that contactor. And so in our auto, let's take a look at the data here. Uh, we have 400 kVA, the input and output kV is 0.48, the tap in percent is zero for the primary, for the secondary it's minus 35 percent. The impedance for the auto is specified here. I just def put in a default value of two percent. That's something that seems reasonable to me for an auto. So that's where you specify the reduce voltage start tap. Now, when you hit the OK button, you're going to get a message. It's going to say, hey, you know, you really got a tap that's way off, you know, nor normal. And it's OK. That's true. That's exactly what we did. So we're going to say, yes, that's exactly, wh exactly what we want. OK, so let's go into stability or transient motor starting. And obviously, these are open and waiting to go. And if we look at the script, uh, for performing this action, I've actually put four of them together because I want to start timing it and then see, well, when really should I close in my auto? And I don't know exactly uh, when I should be basically opening it and transferring to run. So I have a two, a three, a three and a half, and a four second. And let me just show something else. I have a note here for us. So back out a little bit. So this auto, it's an auto transformer for reduced voltage starter. So first we're going to close, start RBS, and then when the motor's mostly started, we're going to open it, and then after delaying, because there's a time delay needed, because you don't want to close them at the same time, we're going to close run to complete the start. So in our script, that's what we should have done. This one being for two seconds. I run to time one, I close low voltage breaker, start RBS, I run for two seconds, I'm doing a two second start, then I open low voltage breaker, start RBS, then I have a delay time, so I'm going to run for 0.05 seconds, now that's three cycles. Now I don't know if that's exactly what the, the, the uh, actual delay time would be on an auto transformer start, but I figured three cycles was pretty close. Close low voltage breaker, run, right down here. Okay, and I have that for two, three, three and a half, and four seconds. And the difference between these is just all I did was change that to three, change it to three and a half, and change it to four. So that's my scripts. 
So let's run one. Two seconds. Now I've done a whole bunch of plotting definitions. I've put, I've put them in for us. And we can see here that in plot one, uh, let's turn this uh, data cursor off just for a moment. We can see that the motor is trying to start. So here's the current. This is the current on the cable, by the way. I'm wanting to look upstream. So you notice I didn't necessarily put the motor current in. I have that on another plot for us to look at. But I want to see the current on the top uh, feeding the auto, the bypass, and the when we do the resistor start, we're going to want to see it there as well. So the motor's starting, and all of a sudden, it's not completed. We drop it out, and we go across the line. So looks like two seconds may not be the proper timing here. Why don't we uh, try three seconds? Mm, we're getting better. Yes. Okay, we're almost done with our start, but we're still getting a significantly high current transient when we go across the line. Look at the detail here. This is not just go up and then have this nice little smooth curve. This is the full dynamic response of the motor. So you can see that you're creating quite the transient torque here, right? You can see that. Quite a bit of transient torque going on while, while we're transitioning. So let's uh, go to three and a half seconds, and we'll see that, whoa, we're almost there. We're almost there, right? Motor's almost finished starting, and then if you hit four seconds, this is the one that you'd like. Okay, so the end of four seconds, we are really completed our start. We pass the knee of the curve. We go across the line. We get a brief current transit, very short, up, not to full locked rotor, but pretty, um, pretty good here at the end. Now, I guess the question is, what would it look like if I was across the line? And, you know, we can do that just by closing in. Now this is, um, I'm sorry, this ran all the way to, uh, to 20 seconds, but we could just zoom in here and take a look at it. And you see that across the line current is somewhere around 1800. Yes, yeah, 1769, you see that right here? Yeah, the green curve, 1781. So about 1800 amps worth of across the line start current. And we can see that when we run this 65% auto, we're significantly down. We're like in 853 amps, and then this quick transient only goes up to, uh, let's zoom in a little bit to take a look at it. Whoops. Goes up to 890 briefly, but nowhere near as high as we had for across the line. Now, what I did was I put together uh, a plot for you where we can take a look at these. And why don't uh, you let me get those up here briefly. And let me move this over so I can find this file. And so I have some curves where I put into Excel for you and uh, plotted them. And here we go. Reduce voltage start. Yes, that's fine. So in this curve, what we have is the across-the-line starting condition. Then we have the auto transformer start for two seconds. I'm sorry, these are all laying on top of each other. So the orange, the, the light gray, the yellow, and the, and the blue here, they're all right on top of each other on this, on this curve. Then we go to here, and we switch down and back up. That's for three seconds all the way down, and then that's for three and a half, and this is for four. So obviously, this really gives us a good picture of those five cases, four cases with the auto transformer start, and one case with an across the line start. And there's this feature on the inside of, uh, of Easy Power. Let me bring this up again, just to show you real quick. In the DS options under the plot output, if you check copy results to clipboard, what it will do is at the end of the simulation, every plot channel you have defined will automatically be pasted onto the clipboard, all of the, the, the plotted results. Not the curves, 
the actual data. Now we just finished this simulation, right? So that data should be on the clipboard. So if we go to Excel again, and let me uh, make a new tab here and I'll show you. I hit Control V, it just pasted it right off of the clipboard. Now that's a lot of plot curves. So you can tell that when I put together these curves, I only had one, two, three, four curves defined and only on one plot. So I could just copy and paste and then paste, I run a simulation and paste, run a simulation, paste and paste, and then I just selected the proper columns of the, of the data and plotted it here for you. So that's our auto transformer start. Now let's go to resistance starting. So resistance starters are applied when the, sh when the circuit really should not be opened during that transition. You don't want to have that transient torque placed on your load. So you don't want a sudden mechanical shock to the load. And uh, so resistance starts are known for their smooth starts. They offer a two-point acceleration uh, or, or with one step of resistance if you want extra smooth starting then just add additional resistor stages with contactors. So our method, similar to the auto transformer, we're going to add <clears throat> an additional branch. So we're going to add a resistance branch with a bypass. Now in our system model that I've put together, of course we already have the bypass there. So we're going to add the resistance branch and we're going to set that branch to the proper amount of ohms and then we're going to add switches and contactors for the bypass and the resistor start itself. <clears throat> if we come back to this case, let's go to the database. And so here's our, our resistor and what we're going to do is we are going to first close start RS and then when we're mostly started we're going to close run to complete the start. We're just going to bypass it. Now we can do that because it's just a resistor. There's no windings, there's no turn ratio across this component, uh, or across the resistor component as there is across the auto. And so we can bypass it and we can get a nice smooth starting condition. So on this component, since we don't have a dedicated resistor element in Easy Power, I've used a busway. I've set it to 100 feet, so I cancel the 100 here and I end up right with ohms. So this is 0.11 ohms. Now, to get this simulation to work out so I could compare it with the auto transformer start, I actually started with about 1 ohm, and then I kept backing it off until I got the resistance that I needed to create the same starting condition uh, that was seen for the auto transformer so I could do a one-to-one -one comparison with it. So notice in the uh, insert of data, we don't have any dedicated resistor item. So again, I used a busway. You could have used a transmission line or even a transformer if, if you wanted to. I just found the busway to be the, the easiest place to do it. So let's go back into stability focus or transient motor starting focus. And uh, in terms of scripts, I have four more. I have a resistor start at two seconds, three, three and a half, and four. And in this script, it's a little simpler, right? We don't have to open up uh, the contactor on the resistor. So we're going to close the contactor, start RS, that's right here, uh, right down here, it's kind of hidden, and then close low voltage breaker run over here. And we're going to do it for two and then seven seconds. So have the resistor on for two and then we're going to run the simulation totally for out to uh, seven seconds. Now again, I have two, three, three and a half, and four. All I did was increase for those times. So let's select it. Resistor start, two seconds. Ah, very good. Okay, so we've seen these kind of curves before, haven't we? Now, this is very interesting. These are often the curves that you see in some software packages for reduced voltage start, like using an auto. But what they're leaving out is the dead time that has to be in there as you're transitioning from the auto transformer to the run condition, but there is a real delay time. And so what you're getting here in Easy Power is a more accurate simulation of what's really happening to the motor 
as to what's just maybe being plotted on time current curve. So here we see we get a smooth start. It's not quite timed properly, but we'll run a few more of these. Hmm, getting closer, just about there. Three and a half seconds. Wow, very good. We've hit that same time. We're at we're right in the knee of the curve, and look at we're not even peeking over that amount of starting current that we're getting uh, off of the resistance start. Last one, four seconds. And indeed, we have a very smooth start. It just it looks like normal starting current. It's just reduced for the motor, and then when we finally close in, there's almost no blip at all in the current here. So a very smooth starting condition, and that's what you get with a resistance start. Now, similar to the auto transformer, I plotted these for you. I copied and pasted them in Excel, and here we go. So across the line, resistance start 2, 3, three and a half and four seconds. This really gives you a good picture of what's going on with your resistance start. Now, in addition, I thought it'd be really important to compare the auto transformer versus the resistor start. Let's do that at two seconds. Mm. Across the line, resistance, auto transformer. So blue, gray, orange. That's at two seconds, three and a half seconds, and finally at four seconds. And this is a really nice comparative curve to really show you the differences between the auto transformer and resistor start. For the same start time, to achieve the same start time, the resistance start is going to draw significantly higher current. Okay? but you get no bump at the end, almost no bump. The auto transformer start less current, but you have a significant transition here when you go to across the line start and you finalize uh, your start here when you finally go across the line. And again, blue is our uh, across the line start all the way. That's a really good curve, okay? that really shows the differences between these two. All right, well that's our auto transformer and resistor starting. Let me close this out. Now let's take a look at soft starting. So in soft starting, what it's basically accomplishing by uh, putting a soft start in front of a motor is simply a voltage controlled output device. It's probably a thyristor or an IGBT drive-like component. Note that Easy Power only models a timed voltage output response. So we're not performing any type of automatic current limit over time or anything. What we're doing is you specify a voltage when you want it to be applied, and then we hold the voltage on the, on the output of the, uh, the soft start, and we apply that to the motor. And it's only built into the motor. But to actually specify a separate soft start component and put it on the one line, that's a huge challenge. And so the way to get this to you as quick as possible was to build it into the motor. I'm not going to go into the details why, but just, just understand that when you're writing software, there's, boy, you run across a lot of limitations on what you can and you can't do in a certain period of time. And so getting it into the motor was the quickest way. Now, again, you're going to specify it with these five data items. Now, this is in the motor data, soft start voltage 1, 2, and 3, and transition times 1, 2, and 2, 3 for the soft start. So you can see that after the start, it, well, when it starts, it's going to jump to applying V1, and then over time, T1, 2, it's going to ramp between V1 and V2, and between time or over time T2, 3, between 2 and 3, it's going to ramp the voltage between 2 and 3. Now, typically, you'll always set V3 equal to 100%. You can set it higher if you'd like, but typically that's, that's what we do because 
it's out of the picture. So you want it set to 100%. So let's take a look at a soft start. Okay, so the soft start is over here. And let's look at the data, actually. So for soft start one, we've got V1 at the, the we V1, V2, V3 at these values, T1, T2, T2, T3 at these values. And you can see that here in the motor data dialog. Excuse me, wrong tab, stability tab. So if you scroll down on the motor data, at the very end, you'll find the voltages and the times. So you can see this matches, right? 40, 54, 100, there you go. Oop, this is actually 7.2 and 0.5, not 7. Not a big deal. We can put that 7. Must have been a typo. Let's look at soft start 2, see if I had anything done wrong there. Nope, that's done right. 45, 53, 100, 7, and 0.5. Very good. Now, I chose these values on purpose. For this first um, soft start on motor M4, I set these values to achieve constant current being held on the motor. So I had to play with these several iterations, several times to get constant current on the motor. Then uh, for soft start 2, I set them to hold constant current on the input to the soft start. And there's a difference. Because of the voltage controlling action of the soft start, the current on the input and the output is not the same. So those are the two conditions that I wanted to model. So let's go into the uh, transient motor starting or dynamic stability. And obviously, I've written a script. Now, this script is going to be rather trivial, okay? It's going to be soft start one, constant motor I. Look at it. All it does is run to one second, close in, low voltage breaker, soft one, and then run to 12 seconds. So I really could have done this with a double click action, but I, but I just wanted to put it into a script so I could very clearly remember what I did for each one. Oh, this is the one for modeling constant current. This is the one for the constant input current. So I just wanted that for clarity. So later on, it's kind of like self-documenting. So here's what we have. If we look at plots two and three, what we're going to see is this is the input on that cable upstream again. That's that cable that we're monitoring current on. And the current is increasing over time while we're going through our soft start action. In plot three, I'm plotting the motor conditions. Now this is really showing us what's happening. This is the terminal voltage of the motor. It's initially zero. It jumps up to the first soft start voltage and it's ramping up to the next one, and finally ramping up to the 100%. Now, notice that any additional voltage drop on the system is included in what that output soft start voltage is. So you, it will include the, um, the voltage on the output of the system. And uh, so this is the motor current itself, and you can see that I controlled it to be very, very flat. Okay, now let's do the next one. Constant current on the input. Run it, and what we see in plot four is that, yes, indeed, on the cable now, we have a very nice flat table-like current response on the input. However, the current to the motor is dropping. All right, well, that's our soft start application. And one thing I'd like to show you is that, you know, we are really trying to keep adding, we are really working on adding features to easy, easy power. And I know as users often it seems like, well, they're very, it takes a long time for them to come and to get this new feature in that, that we want. And, and we do understand that and we're working as hard as we can to add new features to the software. Um, but they have to be tested, they have to be worked on, they have to be proved out so that when you get it, they're working as best as possible. And I'm actually right in the middle of development on looking at the uh, current control, the constant current control on a soft start. So I'm taking a risk here because I just built this version of Easy Power right before uh, the webinar this morning and I added a constant current control to this motor in, in, in the code, in the C++ code. And so 
I wanted to show you that indeed, you know, we are trying to, to do that. We're trying to add new features. And here's one with this soft start. And if I reset the simulation, I've rigged this up so I can get a soft start out of it. And it's not perfect yet. But I just, you know, I just figured I'd show it to you while, while we're in the webinar. And if you look at the auto plot, what you'll see that is indeed the motor current is being held fairly constant. Now, this is all automatic. This is ignoring the V1, V2, V3. And it's just automatically choosing what voltage is necessary to hold the constant current on the motor. And you can see here, yes, that indeed we're ramping and it's controlling voltage to create this smooth current response. Not perfect yet, but it's working pretty well. So I just wanted to put that past you and just show you that indeed we are working on new features. And this is one uh, that I'm trying to get into the software fairly quickly. All right. So that's soft starting. Now, let's move to loading in your torque versus speed data for your loads connected on the shaft of the motor. We want this so we can get greater simulation accuracy. Now, there's the two models that automatically people will, will choose for the motor will be the speed squared or the speed cubed model. And sometimes those just aren't accurate enough because at zero uh, speed, you have zero torque and it just follows the squared or the cubed relationship up, and then when you get to 100% speed, you have 100% torque. This does not let you include static torque at zero speed and, and different types of conditions that happen at, at low speed conditions that change that ideal uh, squared or cubed relationship. And so that's why you want to have this feature. We have the ability to put digitized numbers right into the software. You can. Uh, Take them right from a spreadsheet and copy and paste them right into the motor data dialog. So why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at that? So in Easy Power, I'm going to close this database and open up a new one, and that's our um, load curve. <clears throat> now what I've done here is I is I've made use of another feature in in the software to get this data digitized. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit, okay? So if you remember from the from the webinar I had uh, earlier on, on motor starting part one, you notice that there was a parameter derivation tool on the stability tab with this button here. Okay, so if you go in here, you have basically a nice digitizing tool. Now I've set this up automatically, okay? I had to, I've just put this motor and it's grayed out so it's not you know able to do anything I'm just using it as as a tool and I put in uh, what did I put in uh, some voltage uh, a horsepower just just so I could get in here click, clicked on the calculate button just so I could hit OK and I wouldn't get alarmed about it I enabled the motor I picked a generic an induction and I loaded it in from the, the library and I don't care about this because I just want to use it as a tool so then I go into the parameter derivation and I open up this load curve. It's 0 to 100 and I believe it's 100% maximum torque. So I downloaded this off the internet just so I could do a quick digitizing. Of course I put the red box around, that's from the last webinar, and I just start digitizing. And you see the data is being put in the table on the left-hand side. Okay, maybe move this one. And then I can just take this and hit Control-C, go to Excel, and paste it, Control-V. Now. I've done this already for you. In other words, I digitized this once earlier and then realized, you know, on the inside of the, of the motor data dialog where I'm putting in my starting and running load torques, I realized that it needs to be in per unit instead of percent. So the digitizing was done in percent. So we need to convert that. So here's, here's the one that I copied out later. So I'm just going to hit Control Z and get that off the page. So this is the one I copied out earlier. earlier. And then over here, all I did was set this equal to 
this value divided by 100, right? So I hit F2 to say I'm editing it, so it's taking this cell and dividing it by 100, and this one is doing the same thing, taking this one dividing by 100. And then I just um, did that to fill it in, did that to fill it in. Oh, control Z. And I finished this up by putting uh, by putting in per unit. Now, I take it just like that, hit control C out of the spreadsheet, go back to easy power. I'm done here. I don't even need this anymore. I can just hit close, cancel, who cares? And I can go to my motor, go to the stability tab, and paste right here. Now, I've already done it before, okay, because I put the data in here for this example. But let's say I hadn't done it. Let's use this running load as an example. Control D. There it is. I just pasted it in, okay? If I had a motor that didn't have anything, I could do the same thing again. Torque versus speed. Control D. There it is, okay? So, obviously, you have to select for the model torque versus speed, not speed squared, speed cubed. Once you've selected that, you just click on the top left cell, hit control V and paste that in, and there's your data, okay? Now, notice I put it under motor starting load, but we also have motor running load. Now, we're going to talk about that in, in just a few minutes, what that's for. But let's make sure we put it for starting condition in motor starting load. So if we go into transient motor starting or dynamic stability and we start this motor, what you'll see, and I did that by double click action on the breaker there, what you see is the auto plot is showing us the voltage, current, speed, and torque. But it's not showing me the load torque. Well, I added a plot curve for that. So under plot one, you'll see we have voltage, current, speed, and uh, motor electro electrical air gap torque and the load torque curve, just like we entered it. Look at that. It's right there. So we can plot the real-time load curve out of the motor that's being used to, uh, to load it down in real time. Okay, so that's loading in data into the, your load torque versus speed data onto the inside of the motor. Now, finally, let's look at the starting to running load transfer. This allows you to change your mechanical loading on the motor during a starting simulation. And it's going to automatically transfer from that starting load column you saw to the running load column. That's why we have both starting and running on the stability tab. It's defined in the motor data dialog. So via the motor data, these two particular settings that are called load transfer start, load transfer ramp. What this does is when you hit this time after starting, so it's, it's, it's after starting, you start counting. When you hit this time, this will be when the load transfers from running to the starting load um, torque versus speed curve. And this time, the ramp time, is how long it will transition from starting to running. So let's take a look at that here. And I'm going to close this example and open up my last one. Load transfer. Okay, so let's look at the motor data. Here in the motor data, on the stability tab, you will find load transfer start, load transfer ramp. And so what I've done for this example is I've said at three seconds after starting is initiated, it's going to transfer from this load curve to this load curve. It's going to take zero seconds, so it's going to do it immediately. So it's going to transfer immediately from here to here. If you're at Whatever particular speed you happen to be, if you happen to be at this speed, it's going to go from this torque instantaneously to this torque. And then start following this curve. Okay? Now, I put two curves in here. What I did, if 
from the load curve data, if you remember this before, I took this data and all I did was copy this spreadsheet over to this one and I reduced it to 40%. So I just scaled this down. You see, I added a 0.4 here. So I have 40% load and 100% load. And you can see that here. This is the 40% load for starting. This is the 100% load for running. So if we run the simulation and we start the motor, you will see very clearly down here on the torque, right? We're going through starting conditions. We're finished now at three seconds, which is really four seconds absolute time. See, there's this right up here. You can see we're at four seconds because, you know, I ran steady state to one second. So at four seconds, we switch in the other load suddenly, and this is the transient torque condition that occurs on the motor when it does it, right there. That's the electrical air gap torque. So the motor's responding, its torque is increasing on its output. You'll also, if you could zoom in here, you'll see a slight speed drop. So your speed here on the motor is 0.99672, and here it's 99185. So we have greater slip on the motor. It's hard to see because this is going from zero all the, all the way to one uh, on this curve. But you can see that, that slip increase and the slight speed drop here. So this was a sudden change, like you, like you kicked a valve in or you had a, a solenoid a, a activated valve or something, and boom, you, you slammed it right in. If you wanted to do a more gradual transition, all you'd have to do is change this. So let's change it to one second and run the same start. And you will see that indeed it ramped now between this condition and this condition on the torque, a much smoother transition of torque on the motor. But in reality, slow, uh, as long as there were no mechanical um, conditions being hurt besides the motor, that transient torque was really not that high because the motor went, just went through this one all the way up around its, uh, its uh, breakdown torque condition. It went all the way up here to a very high torque at starting. So that little bump we saw later, that was really not that much of a hit on, on the motor itself. Okay. Well, that's it for this webinar. Uh, we have gone through a host of topics all the way from auto transformer start, resistance start, soft starts, all the way up to how to get the loading uh, data in for your motor and uh, on also how to transition from starting to running loads. And I want to thank you all for joining me today. And uh, I'll be staying online if you have any uh, questions. And uh, I'll be free here to answer them for about the next uh, 10 minutes. So even though I'm going to be stopping the webinar now, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll uh, address them individually. Thank you very much.